What I do want to talk about is something that comes uh, that you can't really see from this top view here, but if we were to draw it out, uh, because in this render, you can't see it that well, but there's actually quite a deep cut that runs right along the top of uh, what, this cooling section, which essentially goes to the cannon tips in the back, which is for your, where your cooling uh, exit is. So Mercedes have actually, uh, and you can see it much better here in this video, or in this image, Mercedes has actually created a water slide in this uppermost engine cover section. So if we highlight this here, you can see just how deep this is right behind the driver's head. So what's going on here? Well, first of all, I think it's no coincidence that it is positioned exactly where it is, right? Um, it is serving an intended purpose. So why would you create a water slide there? We've seen the water slides in the side pods. We talked about it in the AMR 23 video. This is to house nice clean air to bring it to the rear of the car. So what's going on on the top portion of the car here? Well, if we looked at a CFD study that was done by Vissian and, and Josh um, in F1 technical in 2019, what you see on the uh, on what you see plotted here is a lambda CP plot, and essentially what this is showing you is rotation in the flow relative to the free stream energy. Okay, so that's a lot of technical words to just say. If you see kind of a rope-like structure in this image, that's where you might have a vortex. You might have some flow rotation. Okay, so it this is a model, an early model of a uh, of of this uh, ground effect era car. It is the Formula One model, so it's not specific to any team or anything like that. But the flow structures that you see here should be pretty consistent. Now, the halo itself is a very important life-saving aspect of the design of an F1 car, but it will produce a wake and it will disrupt the flow. And so that is, in fact, what you see here. When you look at um, the structures coming off of the halo, let me just use my pointer right here. So this is your halo that you see here, right? And you see a lot of these rope-like structures which come off of the halo. Now, again, just like the front tire produces a wake, the halo itself is also going to produce a wake. And not only that, but the driver's helmet right here itself in the cockpit, which is here, is producing quite a large wake structure which is running all the way down to the rear of the car. And why is this important? because you don't want that rotational flow. You don't want that dirty wake structure coming into the rear of your car. You wanna hold it as high as possible and eject it between the rear wing and the beam wing so it doesn't disrupt any of the flow. And I think that's exactly what Mercedes is doing here. So you should have all those same cockpit losses that we saw in the previous CFD visualization coming off of this very large, uh, not very large, but this, uh, halo here and the, all of these cockpit losses, whether it's from the cockpit itself or it's from the halo, I think are funneling into this water slide. And this is how they're actually channeling this dirty wake down through the cannon exits in this channel that you see here. And it's gonna come now, here's the beam wing right here, right about there's the upper beam wing. Here's the bottom most portion of the rear wing. And so what you should be doing now is through this water slide, you should be bringing all this dirty flow in between the upper beam wing and the rear wing. Now, what happens if you don't have this? So if you didn't have this, uh, what you could potentially get is all of these wake structures then moving down the body of the car and actually interacting with your upper beam wing or moving over the top of your diffuser. And this is exactly what you do not want, right? So I think that's what Mercedes is doing here with this double water slide, which is on the uppermost portion of the engine cover. I think they're housing something and what they're housing is all of the dirty wake structures that are coming from the cockpit losses and the halo losses and moving these then in between the rear wing and the upper beam wing. 
And this is just another look at that same sort of a thing. This is one of the track shots that we have uh, actually from today. So you can again see just the depth of the cut here. You can see the exact location relative to George's helmet there and relative to the halo itself. Now, it's something just to mention real quick here is that uh, Mercedes is one of the teams that if you look right here, have a, have a splitter on the top of their halo. And what could this be doing? Um, you know, if we looked at the cross section view of the halo, it might look something like this. And then you've got a little splitter, which is on top of this, right? Like this. So what you're actually doing with a splitter like this is trying to, again, reduce the wake size because as the flow moves over the halo, there is going to be a local disturbance because of that. And you might have some vortex structures which come off of that. And now when you have this splitter, you're actually force feeding that air through this very small gap and as you do that, it's actually narrowing the size of the wake. So it is a wake management tool. So very clearly Mercedes has put something there because they feel like there is an importance to managing that wake in the halo itself. And I think in this case, um, this is in fact what they're doing. Uh, with this uh, double hump, double water slide on the engine cover, they're actually housing these dirty wake structures from the ha from the halo, from the cockpit losses. And these are being carried down the cannon exits and ejected in between the beam wing and the rear wing.